Welcome to The Explainer. Today, we're going to take what can feel like a super complex process, software delivery, and turn it into a simple, automated assembly line. You know, you just tap update, and a few moments later, new features just appear. Well, the magic behind all of that is a concept that has absolutely revolutionized software development. And today, we're going to build it from scratch. In simple terms, it's an automated process that takes a developer's code and delivers it straight to users both reliably and quickly. Every single time a developer commits new code, this pipeline kicks off to get those changes out into the world. Now, this is where GitLab really shines. With the traditional approach, you'd have to set up and manage a completely separate server for your pipeline. But with GitLab, CICD is built right into the platform where your code already lives. This makes getting started incredibly seamless. So here's our game plan. We're going to build our automated assembly line in five clear stages, starting from the basic concept and taking it all the way to a fully deployed application. OK, let's dive right in. First things first, we need to understand just how GitLab actually makes all this automation possible. And here is the single most important thing to grasp. Your entire pipeline is treated as code. It's all defined in this one specific file, .lab-ci.yml, which lives right inside your project. GitLab just automatically finds it and does what it says. No complicated menus, just a simple text file you can version control. You can kind of think of it like this. The GitLab server is the brain of the operation. It knows the plan. The GitLab runners, on the other hand, are the hands that do the actual work. And to keep everything nice and tidy, they usually do this work inside clean, temporary workspaces called Docker containers. All right, time to get our hands dirty. Every good assembly line has to start with a quality check, right? For us, that means automatically testing our code. So the fundamental building block of our pipeline is something called a job. You can just think of it as a single defined task. And we're going to kick things off by creating a job that does one thing. It runs our application's tests. Now, this might look a little technical, but it's really straightforward. First, you use image to tell GitLab what kind of environment you need. Then, before script is for any setup commands you have to run. And finally, script is where you put the main command you want to execute. Simple as that. And just like that, we have our first working pipeline. I mean, how cool is that? With just this tiny bit of configuration in a repository, GitLab will now automatically run our tests every single time we push a change. That's automation in action. Awesome, the tests passed. So the next station on our assembly line is to package up the application so it can be shipped anywhere. And we're gonna do that by building a portable Docker image. Uh-oh, wait a minute. If you just add a new build job, you'll notice something weird. It runs at the same time as the test job. We definitely don't want to waste time building the application if the tests are failing, right? So the solution here is to create stages. Stages are how we organize our pipeline into a sequence. So we'll create a test stage and then a build stage. This guarantees that our build job will only ever start after everything in the test stage has passed successfully. This brings up a really important question. Hard coding secrets like usernames and passwords right into your code is a massive security risk. So how do we handle them? Well, GitLab gives us a secure little vault for exactly this purpose. They're called CICD variables. In the GitLab settings, we can create variables like registry user and registry pass. They're kept encrypted and are only made available to the runner when a job actually needs them. Then we can safely use them in our script with a dollar sign. So let's put it all together. You can see we've now defined our stages for order and we have a new build image job. This job uses a special Docker in Docker image, which lets us run Docker commands from inside a container to securely log in with our variables, build the app, and push that new image to a repository. We are on the home stretch. Our application is tested, it's all packaged up. Now it's time for the final, most exciting step on our assembly line, delivering it to a live server for users to actually see. The logic here is pretty simple, right? We connect to our cloud server, get rid of the old version of our app, and then fire up the new one. The real trick is making this whole sequence happen automatically and securely. OK, so to connect to our server, the pipeline is going to need a private SSH key. Now, you can't just paste a big multi-line key into a regular variable. It just doesn't work well. That's why GitLab has this special file type variable. It tells GitLab to take the text we give it and turn it into an actual temporary file for our job to use. And here's our final config file, 
Check out that new deploy stage and job. You can see in the before script, we're changing the permissions on our key file to make it secure. Then, the main script just uses that $SSH key variable to connect to our server and run the commands to launch our brand new application container. And with that last job, our assembly line is complete. Pretty cool, right? Let's just step back for a second and take a look at the big picture of what we've actually built here. So just think about this flow for a moment. A developer pushes a single line of code. That one action automatically kicks off this entire chain of events. The code gets tested, then it gets packaged, then it gets deployed, ensuring a fast, reliable, and consistent delivery process every single time. And that's really the key idea to take away here. This isn't just about code. It's a powerful way of thinking about how to automate any complex workflow. The principles we've used today can be applied to streamline processes far beyond just software development. Thanks for watching. A feeling? You tap update on your phone and boom, just like that, your favorite app has some cool new feature. It almost feels like magic, right? But it's not. It's actually this really carefully planned process that gets code from a developer's computer into your hands, like instantly. So today, we're gonna pull back the curtain and see exactly how that journey works. Let's dive in. No, really, have you ever stopped to think about that? How does some new idea go from a developer's brain onto their screen and then all the way to your phone, sometimes literally overnight, without everything just, you know, breaking? That's been one of the biggest challenges in software for ages. And the answer? It all comes down to automation. Okay, so it wasn't always the smooth. Not too long ago, releasing new software was, well, it was a terrifying all-hands-on-deck manual job. We're talking slow, super risky, and something you'd only dare to do maybe a few times a year. Because, you know, one tiny mistake could bring the whole system crashing down. The new way? It's the polar opposite. It's an automatic non-stop flow that's fast, super reliable, and happening all the time. So, how do we make that happen? Well, we get there with this thing called an automated pipeline. And honestly, the best way to picture it is like a digital assembly line for code. And one of the best tools out there for building this assembly line is GitLab. It's what guides that code safely from the developer's keyboard all the way to you. So the engine that powers this whole assembly line is something called CICD. Now I know that stands for Continuous Integration and Continuous Deployment, which is a total mouthful. But here's all you really need to remember. It's an automated process that just kicks off the second a developer saves their code. From that exact moment, everything is automatically tested, built, and prepped for release without a human lifting a finger. So what's GitLab's secret sauce in all this? I mean, there are other tools out there, right? Well, GitLab's big advantage is that it builds this entire pipeline right into the same platform where developers are already storing their code. It becomes a total one-stop shop. You don't need to bolt on a bunch of different tools or deal with complex setups. It's all just there, integrated from the very start. And you might think this sounds super complicated, but the way it works is actually pretty simple. It really boils down to two main parts. First, you've got the GitLab instance. Think of this as the brain. It holds all the code and it knows exactly what needs to be done. Then you have the GitLab runner. This is the hands. It's a totally separate machine that takes instructions from the brain and then, well, it does all the heavy lifting, the actual testing, the building, all that stuff. Okay, so how does the brain tell the hands what to do? It uses this one file right here, the .gitlab-ci.yml file. Now don't let that crazy name scare you. It's just a simple text file that lives right alongside the project's code. And you can think of it like the blueprint or maybe a recipe. It contains every single step-by-step -step instruction for the pipeline. First, run these tests. Next, package up the app. Finally, send it to the server. It's all written down right there. All right, so we've met the key players. Now let's actually follow a single chunk of code as it makes its journey through this pipeline. And I want you to think of it like a series of trials or maybe tests of worthiness that it has to pass to prove it's ready for you. Every single change, no matter how small, has to pass through these three basic stages. First, it gets tested to prove it's safe. Second, it's built into a nice, neat package. And third, it's deployed, or, you know, delivered to its final destination. Let's take a closer look at each of these trials. So, trial number one, the test. This is the ultimate quality gate. The second a developer submits their code, the pipeline just automatically unleashes a whole battery of tests on it. Its one and only job is to answer a single question. Does this new code break anything that was working before? And if the answer is yes, the journey stops right here. End of the line. But if the code passes all the tests, it gets to move on to trial two, the build. 
So here, the new code, plus all the other little pieces it needs to work, we call them dependencies, they all get bundled up into this standardized, self-contained unit called a Docker image. And the absolute best way to think about this is like putting a piece of software in a box. Everything it could possibly need to run is sealed up inside, all ready to be shipped. And that brings us to the final trial, deployment. That box we just packed up, it gets automatically shipped over to a live server. Then the system opens the box, sets everything up, and boom! Just like that, the new feature is live and ready for everyone to use. The journey from code to you is officially complete. So we've seen the whole journey, but you might be wondering why go through all this trouble just to automate it? Why does this matter so much? Well, the impact is, it's just massive. Not just for the developers building the stuff, but for us, the people actually using it. I mean, the benefits here are just huge. For us, it means we get new features way faster and we can trust that the app is going to be more reliable because everything has been so intensely tested. For the developers, it means they get to spend their brain power on being creative, not stressing out about some manual release process. And really, for everybody involved, it means every single update is safer and has way, way less risk. And we're not just talking about little, tiny improvements here. Teams that really embrace this way of working can often release updates 10 times faster, or sometimes even more than that. I mean, just think about that for a second. Something that used to take months can now be done in a matter of days or even hours. That completely changes the game for how fast an idea can become a reality. So when you step back and look at the big picture, what we're really talking about here isn't just a clever tool or a new checklist. It's, it's a completely different way to think about building software. It's a culture that's built from the ground up around speed and confidence and just constantly getting better. And I think this really sums it up perfectly. Automating this whole pipeline isn't just a technical upgrade. It's a cultural one. It's what gives teams the power to take their ideas from a whiteboard sketch to a real working product with a speed and a level of confidence that was honestly unthinkable before. It just closes that gap between imagination and execution. And that really leaves us with one last big idea to think about. In a world where the best ideas have to get to people as fast as possible to make a difference, what new things become possible when our ability to create is no longer held back by how fast we can deliver? You know, what happens when our ideas can finally travel at the speed of code?